Hello everybody, after such an introduction, I can't wait to hear, to, to hear ourselves. <laughs> Probably another comment would be, I never thought we would have heard our eulogy while alive. <laughs> it's so good to be with you. Wow, it's plenty of you. Thanks to all of you who have served me medication to keep me alive. God bless you. Are you one of those? Raise your hand. Give her a round of applause. See her there? Yes, thank you. Um, so we're talking about the art and science of happiness. Is it okay if I do a quick alert test? When I say one, everybody has a partner? Anybody, everybody that can stand is participating? Okay, when I say one, you give, you give your partner a high five. When I say two, you make a complete turn. When I say three, you just bow your knees a little bit. Please don't go too far that you can't come back up. <laughs> and when I say four, you're going to shout, I choose health and happiness. Okay? So you remember, one, two, three, four. You remember all of them? Okay, 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 okay. That's a rehearsal taking place. <clears throat> so, let's go. Everybody ready? Let's go. Four. One. Four. Two. Three. Four. One. Four. Two. Three. One, two, 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 four. You know what? You deserve a dance. Let's let's have Pharrell. Yeah. It might seem crazy what I'm about to say. Yeah, let's de-stress. So, this morning I came to that session and I heard a lot about suicide. And I sat there and said, wow, what a connection between suicide and happiness. But you know, my, my doctoral work is in suicide prevention. And after working with people who are suicidal for a number of years, I even wrote the book, Confronting Suicide, Helping Teens at Risk, and we have a little book table outside with this book. We realized truly happy people don't kill themselves or kill others. So then we went on and we wrote another book, Gear to Live, 12 Keys to Happiness. Does she look happy? After 32 years, does she look happy? Yes. Happiness is in your hands. We realize that each of us has a choice that you can actually choose happiness. You have heard about the art and science of happiness. I wish I had time to take your expectations, but I know you want to get to lunch as soon as possible. So I'm just going to jump to the last section of our expectation. All right, good, good, good. So let's read together now. I am in charge of how I feel today, and I am choosing happiness. Anybody that can do a little bit with a little more happiness in their lives, please raise your hand. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Take them down. Those of you who didn't raise your hand, please raise your hand for prayer. <laughs> yeah, I think all of us can do a little more happiness in our lives. We have been throwing the word around happiness. 
What really is happiness? Anybody can tell us? Anybody? Anybody? Anybody can tell us what is happiness? Sure. Anybody? Just raise your hand quickly. Yes? You, ha, ha. Yes. What is happiness? You can show for me, please. Shout. All right, for me, I can speak for myself. Yes. All right, free to be what you want to be. All right, according to what the Lord gives you to do. Yes, what about you, ma'am? It's a feeling that feels good. Happy. It's a feeling that you feel like a feeling you have never felt before, right? Okay, anybody else? I saw a hand in this section. Uh, okay. Yes. To be free from stress. <laughs> yeah. A state of being content, irrespective of outside circumstances. All right, we'll, we'll, good, 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 good. We'll take one more right here. Satisfaction. Satisfaction, okay. All right. So here are two definitions that we're giving. A pleasurable or satisfying experience. Something happens and somebody is happy. Mr. Wright arrives. And somebody is happy until she realizes Mr. Right was not all that right after all. <laughs> it's an event, it's an experience. Something happens and the person is happy for a while. Anybody come from country? Yeah. And no bamboo fire? Yeah. It just blaze. So that is the kind of thing. It is, it is just short-lived. The other definitions we want to share with you. Oh, somebody wins the lotto. And... She's happy until the in-laws and the outlaws start making demands. So what about the men? You know, sometimes it is Miss Wright arrives too. <laughs> well, thank you so much for bringing us up. Speak for you on behalf of the holy women. You know, a lot of people wear masks. Men wear masks and female wear masks. And sometimes we marry a mask and we get involved in a relationship with a mask. And those, real, those people really don't exist. You know what I'm talking about? Sure. Sure, okay. If we're going to be honest with ourselves, yes. So, thank you, Mrs. Thomas. A pleasurable or satisfying experience. Another definition is a state of well-being and contentment. Thank you. It is knowing that you know that in spite of what's going on, there's a threshold beneath which you would not go. Another name, another word for that is J-O-Y. Anybody knows the song? Two, three. J-O-Y, joy, joy, The Holy Ghost. J-O-Y, joy, joy in the Lord. Don't let nobody. Don't let nobody steal your joy. Don't let nobody steal your joy. Don't let nobody steal your joy. A round of applause for my. Friends. And by the way, any of you want to talk, want to, or, or, want to book her afterwards, I just appoint myself as their manager. All right, so anybody knows the name Robin Williams? Yes. Anybody thinks he, he was happy? Yes. We thought so, eh? Yes. After his death, so one commentator wrote, he made others happy, but he himself was not happy. And sometimes we fake it. Well, a young lady stayed at our home for a while, for three months. She was a customer service rep. Before she went to work, every morning she would go before the mirror and she would rehearse her smile. <laughs> this one works. Because sometimes there's so much pain on the inside. And, and we don't want the people we associate with to know what happened. What's going on with us? We want to be true to our calling and our service. It's a state of well-being and contentment. We've come across the word shalom. Anybody knows what that word shalom means? You know, peace, yes. So, allow me to introduce to you my co-presenter. All the way from Kingston, Jamaica, Mrs. Faith Thomas. A round of applause for her. 
All right. No, man, my wife deserves more than the 500 I want in here now. All right, good, good, good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So you said yes, peace. So peace be with you, eh? But shalom has more than that as a meaning. And we're going to look at some of those words that shalom also means. It's a Hebrew word that has a concept of universal flourishing and comprehensive well-being. And here are some other words that go with that. It is wholeness, well-being, peace, tranquility, rest, all of those. Also prosperity. Some of you would know Jeremiah 29 verse 11, which says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give hope and a future. Now the word prosper is also one of the meanings of shalom. So it has a lot of different meanings. Now, we are going to look at some quotations and I'm going to break you up in a number of groups for you to consider one of these quotations. So from group one, here are the, the, the four quotations. One to 15. Table one, table one to 15. I want you to look on the first quotation. Here's what we're going to be doing. We're going to ask, what do you understand from the quotation? Do you agree or disagree with this statement? Why? And we're not going to choose one person to respond, but I want you to think about it in case we call a table name. And we just have one person from that table that's telling us what it is that you came up with. So at table one to 15, you have number one quotation to look at and to just discuss at your table. Tables two, table two, uh, no, 16 to group two, 16 to 30, to table 30. You're looking at number two. Table 31 to 45. Tables 31 to 45, you are looking at number three. And all the tables after 45, that's 46 and up, you are looking at number four. So just take two minutes, two minutes max, and look at the quotation. What is it saying? Do you agree or disagree? And... And why? Yeah. All right, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, one. Let's go. So let us look first at the first 15 tables. Number one. Can I have a volunteer from the first 15 tables? What is this quotation saying? And do you agree or disagree? Why? All right. Okay, I'm at table six. All right, who is gonna give us a response at table six? What is the quotation saying, do you agree? Why? Okay, I agree with that statement because happiness is a state of mind and you can choose the state that you're in. So you choose to be happy regardless of what is happening around you. All right, great, give them a round of applause. You choose to be happy. Any, any other group in the first 15? Where? Okay, here we go. You ready? And then we're going to go to the next question, the next statement. Okay, what about, that's for normal persons, right? What about persons who are not in control of their own minds? The, in, are you saying they can't be happy then? So you have to be have a, awareness that it is your mind. Right? You have to be in control of your mind because persons with mental illnesses are not in control of their mind. Okay, so this table here is asking, what about those who are not in control of their minds? Is it that they can't be happy? So what is your answer to that? 
What do you think? So, happiness is a state of mind. You choose to be happy. All right. All right. So we're gonna go on to I to number three now. Um. So, so some of us were saying that you can change um, how you feel by actually thinking. Others were saying it is not that practical. It is not that easy because when you're in a quote unquote bad situation, it is almost impossible for you to change your thoughts and to snap out of it, as it were. Okay, All right. great. Thank you so much. I hope that Give by the end of today. Applause. And we are we are going to look at that further down. Okay. We are three. You're, you're, oh, three. Or right, another group with number with question two. All right, over here. Thank you. Yeah, I strongly believe it's what you think about. Because even when we're coming to this earth, you don't choose who your family are, your circumstances, and at times in life and your journey, what you experience. And most times to get you to the next level, it is your perspective and a positive perspective on what you want and what you're about that will make the difference for you to survive. My note says, circumstance will be the fact or the condition connected to an event. So I can be poor, but my attitude, which is a way of thinking and feeling, I can be quite okay with being poor. I can be happy about being poor, and that motivates me to do well. So it affects my circumstances, but it doesn't dictate my thinking and my believing. All right, give them a round of applause. I like, I like what you said. It may affect your circumstances, but it does not have to dictate your behavior or your thinking. Nice. Anybody else want to, which group wants to share? Or should I just pick on one? You have question three and you want to share. All right, so this is 45. Who is the spokesperson for this, Steve? Uh, should I send him to the naughty corner? <laughs> okay, so 39. I remember I heard a doctor able telling you you need to have a private corner there you can talk to me. Just imagine that you're in a private corner right now with me. Okay. What we were saying is that it all depends on your attitude. You can be poor and you can be happy. You can be rich and you can be happy. And you can be rich and you can be unhappy. A person who is very poor, for example, a very poor person, had no food, finds a little food in a dumpster. He's a very happy person. He's eating. So it's your attitude. Yes. yes. Give them a round of applause. Thank you. It is your attitude. Finally, our last set. You are still on number three. Last no, one on number, number three. Four. Final number four. Last one on number three. Number four, and a volunteer down here. All right, here am I. All right, so happiness, still on number three, happiness is a state of mind. So the richest man, you know, with the best of circumstances does not necessarily mean that he's happy. So we feel that you can live your best life and be happy, you know, without or without really regards to your circumstances. Okay, give them a round of applause. Now we are on the last one. Okay, great. So number four, we've agreed with Carrie, and we've broken it into two sections. Every day is a new day, and that means we've gotten a new opportunity that our creator has granted us to be the best person that we can be and recreate our happy moments. And the second part we also agreed with that you'll never be able to find happiness if you don't move on. So in order to find true happiness and contentment, we all need to let go of past mistakes, resentments, and regrets. And before we can do so, we need to accept that it's a process. One, we need to face those challenges. Two, learn from those events. Three, use them as a guide. And four, approach the future with boldness. All right, Great. that's a good note. 
Any, yes, we have another this, one. Our final um, group feedback. Yes, as a group, at first, looking at the questions, most people agreed with what was being said. But while we're discussing, we're looking at it in different aspects. Now, it says every day is a new day. What if you approach that new day without much hope? Because even though the day arrives, you may not be hopeful. Also, um, it says that uh, you'll never be able to find happiness if you don't move on. What if you move on and move on with the baggages? Now, another one of group members was saying that, can you truly move on with baggage? Or the fact that you move on with the baggage means that you do not really move on. So, you know, there's a way, it depends on how you look at it, your perspectives, your circumstances, and so on. All yeah, right. Talk, give them a round of applause. Yeah. So we're going to address, we're going to address some of those going forward. So we're not going to take it now. Just but a we're moment, please. Let's have one comment here. The comment is, if you have the baggage, you have not moved on. All right, right. All right. Give her a round of applause, please. If you have the baggage, then you... If you have the baggage, then you have just moved, changed location. <laughs> All right. Now, there is a lot of research on happiness and mental health. And recent evidence on the impact of genes on happiness shows that in this particular meta-analysis by Nez and Roy Sam, they found that an average heritability of 0.4 existed. So 40%, they said, of your happiness is based on your genes. Hmm. You know? All right. <laughs> However, circumstances plus intentionality equals 60%. Some persons in their research show that circumstances is about 10%. And it is not so much about your circumstance, but your intentionality, your whole attitude. So we can choose to be happy. Everybody, let's say that. We can choose to be happy. All right. Happier individuals suffer less from certain infirmities and live longer on average. Wow. Individuals with higher subjective well-being or happiness have stronger immune and cardiovascular systems. Evidence suggests that positive moods versus neutral or negative moods predict better physiological parameters, such as cortisol, blood pressure, and immune system parameters. Does that sound good? So all the more why we want to be happy and we want to help others to be happy because it translates into better health and well-being. So we're going to look at ways to be happy. Science tells us the elements of happiness that leads most directly to a happy life and the ones that we think will make us happy and don't. There are some things that people think, if I only, then I'll be happy. What are some of those things? Money. If you get more money. So what the research actually shows is that once your basic physical needs for survival, food, shelter, and water are met, more money doesn't necessarily make you any happier. You know, any plenty, any, you know people who have plenty of money who kill themselves? One, one, one Jamaican living in Dias, diaspora took some actions recently that just shocked the world, all, all of us. But the research also shows that if we use the money that we have to help other people, then that is when we become happier. Anything else? Sometimes we think if I just finish this degree, then I'll be happy. And some people have degrees until they are warm but still can't find happiness. Okay, sometimes people think that if I only get m -m 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 married, then I'll be happy. And sometimes people think if I only have a child, I'll be happy. Sometimes people think if I only have a house, then I'll be happy. And then it becomes another house, or a bigger house, or if I only have a car, right? 
I'll be happy. Then a newer car and still can't find happiness. Sometimes we think, you know, people from certain race or color are happier. Some people who are darker skin want to get uh, some bleach. And those who are darker, a lighter skin, they want to get a tan. It's like we just can't satisfy, eh? People for whom money, read with me please. People for whom money, success, fame, and good looks are especially important are less satisfied than those who strive for good relationship with others, develop their talents, and are active in social causes. So these are the important things in life. Good relationships, develop your talents, and be involved in social causes. Happiness on the job. <laughs> Did you know that people who are happy at work tend to enjoy life more? They have better health, have stronger relationships, they have greater sense of purpose in life. Let's read this slide together. Happiness is not the absence of problems, it's the ability to deal with them. If there's anything that is certain about life, if there's anything that is certain about wife, if there's anything that is certain about work, yeah, and husband too, and children, is that there are going to be problems. Somebody says it is our problems that call for our mental and our spiritual growth. Have you ever heard a saying, a smooth sea never makes a skillful sailor? It's the tough things in life that build character. You're not going to be problem free at work, but it is the way we respond um, to it. According to Sanja Lubomirsky, a positive psychologist, happy workers bring huge benefits, not just for themselves, but for the organizations too. Happy employees have better health, thus less absence from work, are more productive, are more creative. They love their jobs and are more committed to their organizations. They go the extra mile to accomplish organizational goals. They honor customers and bring in new customers. And happy employees affect the bottom line positively. How many of you want to be happy employees and to employ people who are happy? Yeah, all of us, eh? There are some principles for happiness that we want to share with you today. And the first one is count your blessings. Does the choir know the song? Two, three. Wow, today is Sunday. You should be in church. Thank you. But yeah. Well, count your blessings. Some time ago, I woke up and I was getting ready to go do a three-hour presentation on happiness. The driver for our highest vehicle called to say he, got, he woke up and the vehicle was not in its place. Them teeth fit. And I am driving to go do this presentation. And to tell you the truth, I wasn't feeling happy. But I said to myself, what am I going to talk to these people about today when I'm really not feeling happy? And it's like a voice said to me, practice the first principle you're teaching in happiness seminars. And I said, God, I thank you that my wife is not now held ransom and I have to find how much money to come up with her. For her. <laughs> I said, I thank you, God, that my boys were not out last night and were at the bus, the, the, the stoplight and were gun butted and now traumatized. I thank you, God, that there was nobody in an accident and I found a reason to celebrate, even in the midst of the, the loss. And that changed my whole attitude. And I did a, a presentation. Comparison is the thief of joy. Sometimes we look over the neighbor's fence and their lawn is greener than ours. And what we don't re realize is that they're paying more water rate. Yeah, and we just compare and we just want, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Count your blessings. Have an attitude of gratitude. It doesn't matter where we are in life. There are many things that we can give thanks for. 
Read with me, please. On the first International Day of Happiness, March 20th, 2013, the Action for Happiness organization in Britain encouraged people to count their blessings. It said, people who are grateful tend to be happier, healthier, and are more fulfilled. It also said, being grateful can help people cope with stress and can even have a beneficial effect on the heart rate. You can imagine, just by being grateful. By the way, please note, March 20th is International Day of Happiness. All right, so we do a week of activities. We have a conference on the day on happiness and all those kinds of stuff. Okay, what are the things that Damian Marley um, grateful for? If you want to be super successful and happy at work, you need to make a commitment to your own workplace happiness. How many of us know that is a minority of people giving Jamaica the bad name about the number of murders taking place? Yes. Minority of people. And in our workplace, sometimes we allow those with a bad attitude to set this atmosphere and to set the pace in the workplace. Let's shine some happiness in our workplace, even as we go back to work. Eh? What can I choose to be thankful for about my job? What are you thankful for about your job? Just tell somebody at your table. Just yeah. Four persons that you can express thanks to for the ways in which they have positively impacted your life. Is that okay? Yeah. All right, great. Who can I thank? Yes. Then, practice acts of kindness. Do random and deliberate acts of kindness. How many of us know that when we are kind to people, it's like something come back to us? Yeah. Lady told me the other day that she went to the restaurant and she bought her, her dinner. And she was stepping out of the restaurant, went downstairs, just to see this lady with her child who said, is from morning, she not eat nothing. She gave her dinner. She went home, she was hungry but her belly full. Anybody know that kind of way? Yes. yes, man. When you know that you did something sacrificially. Sometimes in our circle, we like to speak the truth, right? We like when people speak the truth. And we like to speak the truth. But sometimes we don't speak the truth in love. Sometimes we just tell him a piece of our mind. Or tell her a piece of our mind, right? So I want to encourage you to speak the truth in love. Everybody read with me, please. Before you spit out those words, Amen. wow, anybody suffering from bitter words? Some of, the, some of us have been told all kinds of stuff that we're not going to come out to anything good. We're ugly like we poop and all kinds of stuff like that. Eh? Some of us still feel the pain of those bitter words. So I want to caution us, even as we relate to each other in the workplace, at home, or wherever we are, that before we spit out those words, taste them. Principle number three, invest time and energy with family and friends. Research shows that people that spend a lot of time with family and friends tend to be happier. And especially as we are working in such a high stressed environment and we're trying to make the last dollar let us make sure that we are spending time with our family our friends our children our spouses because in the final analysis they are the ones that really matter all right manage stress what do you do to manage stress what you do? Tell somebody beside you what you do to manage stress. What do you do? Yes. Yes. Laugh and pray and exercise and all of that. All right. So here are some ways. Eat right. And when I came in, I saw you eating all of those fruits. Wonderful. Awesome. That's because all the sweets were finished. <laughs> Exercise. Listen to music. Relax. When last you had a, a massage? <coughs> Sorry. Yes. Get a massage. You know what this one is? Talk therapy. Talk about it. 
Some of us need to see a therapist, but some of us just need to talk to a friend, talk to somebody and share what is going on, okay? And sometimes we don't want to share because we feel that, you know, we are ashamed. Listen to me. There is nothing that you can do that somebody else hasn't done before you and get help. Okay? Number five, take personal responsibility. And for your life and stop blaming others. You know anybody who is never ever his fault or her fault? Yes. Even when the man thump down the woman, he say, you see, you make me thump you down again. <laughs> we don't encourage those kind of things. We must take responsibility for our life. You control your thoughts and actions and thus control your life. Other people, fate and circumstances may impact your life but you have the final say as to how your life is lived. The happiest people, everybody, the happiest people don't have the best, best of, of everything. everything. They just make the best of everything. That sounds like something we should read again, not true? Let's go. The happiest people don't have the best of everything. They just make the best of everything. There are some things in life that we have control over, and there are some things that we do not have control over. What are some of those things that, I, that you have control over? Thoughts. All right, let's look at some of them. I have control over my time, my attitude, my thoughts, my emotions, my responses, my spending, my behavior, my joy, my happiness, who I love and not love, my inner peace, and so many more. But there are some things that we do not have control over. I cannot control God, time, death, my boss, what happens, others' attitude, others' actions, my spouse, weather, disaster, what others think. We can't even control our children. You know what is the true test as to whether or not we have control over them? What they do when they are not in our presence. You'd never believe it's your little angels, those. <laughs> yeah. I have control over me, myself, and I. I cannot control anyone or anything outside of me. So, I want to encourage us to make the effort to control the me, myself, and I. Anybody that has control over you, you have become that person's puppet. Yes. You see how you make me, then you're, you're, the person touch your button and your head goes, so pull your string and your head goes, and your foot goes, so then you are that person's puppet. I want to encourage us to take control over our own lives. Do not be, not. Anyone or anything outside of me, I do not have control over anything or anyone outside of me. I have control over me. I can only seek to influence others and things outside of me. And we want to work with our children, we want to work with people on the world to help them to practice even those things that we teach them while they are, we're, they're not in our presence. Quick story. At one stage when our children were at home, we had a little rule that says the last person to leave home must make sure that there are no dishes in the sink. <laughs> so Joseph, our teenager, was teenager at that time. It was midterm, and he was going to be home. Uh, but in the middle of the day, er, in the middle of the morning, the coach called to say basketball training. So he's taking the bus. We don't live so near to the city, and he's trying to get out of the house as quick as possible. And the dishes are in the sink. He's going through the door and he heard mommy's word echoing in his ear. Don't leave dirty dishes in the sink. And I'm happy to report that he went back and washed the dishes. <laughs> we can only seek to influence others and things outside of me. A happy person is not a person in a certain set of circumstances, but rather a person with a certain set of what is that big A word? Anybody needs an attitude adjustment? Many times we find that person in the mirror. Person that needs the attitude adjustment, yeah. We're gonna watch this video a little bit and here are some study questions. What character strengths does Ron display? 
According to the video, what are the choices that you have when you are faced with life's challenges? How did Ron overcome? And I want to throw in one extra one. What is your takeaway from this video? Oh, what phrase will you take away from this video? Okay, let's watch it for a few minutes. The greatest virtues of any artist are patience and a steady hand. And patience is something Ron Hagee has had to master more than most, because Ron doesn't have the use of his hands. In fact, his body from the neck down remains forever motionless. Mixed up some paint, put the brush in my teeth, and I dabbed at it because, you know, I'm not going to let my mom completely down. Because <laughs> he never was interested in any kind of art. Ron can create beautiful oil paintings and has sold more than a thousand prints. You know, I'm happy to be alive. Anybody else? There you go. You know, I woke up this morning breathing and I said to myself, it's going to be a good day. And somebody else said any day above ground's a good day. You know what I mean? The future looked bright for 17-year-old Ron Hagee, a wrestler, skier, bodybuilder, and football star. Little did he realize when he drove to Southern California on spring break with his little brother that a surfing accident would change his life forever. And as I dove into that wave, I hit the sandbar with my head, a mighty blow and it snapped my head clear back into my shoulder blades and I heard a terrible crunch. And instantly my neck was broke. Months later, after all this rehab, they said, Mr. Hagee, we're sending you home. I said, uh, excuse me? <laughs> I can't feed myself. I'm not walking yet. You know, I got a scholarship. Ron was depressed, not wanting to live. He prayed to die. And I planned my suicide coward's way out then he heard a voice eight-year-old Jimmy his roommate who was in a coma spoke Jimmy said this I love you Ron Ron decided to quit feeling sorry for himself and realize that happiness comes from helping others <laughs> sometimes life it's not so easy but you got two choices when life messes you up. You can get bitter, negative, depressed, give up, or you can get better, positive, pick it up, and go on. I learned to write with my mouth. I started typing with a stick in my teeth. I entered college. I got a degree. I said, I'm going on. They said, how are you going to do it? I said, I'll do it. I have a master's degree from San Diego State University. I think I was the only guy that truly mouthed his way through college. I got a counseling credential. I couldn't get a job. Nobody would hire me. I got married. I want to get off of welfare. I felt discouraged, but I didn't give up. That was not an obstacle. That was an opportunity. And I began speaking in public schools. You know, I'm here to tell you that uh, you're the master of your attitude. I'm here to tell you that no matter what the circumstance, situation, problem, past, you can rise above. No one can make you bitter. No one can make you sad. I was speaking to a student the other day, and he said, they made me mad. I had to mess them up. That's a lie. No one can make you mad, you choose anger. And no one can make you depressed, you choose to be depressed. And I'm the master of my attitude, and I woke up this morning, someone else brushed my teeth and combed my hair and shaved my face. Someone else got me dressed and put me in my wheelchair and strapped me down. But I decided that it's going to be a good day because I could control my attitude. And my attitude controls my direction. And so my direction is to be successful with what I have. I got to tell you something funny because funny things happen to me. I don't know what it is about animals. 
but they stare at me wherever I go. <laughs> and these animals, they seem to talk to each other and they say something like, you see the dude in the wheelchair? That human being? He's all tied down. Let's attack him. <laughs> I have been so attacked by animals. <laughs> Dogs and cats. And the other day I got attacked by a goose. That was wicked. That goose had a bad attitude. <laughs> My buddy said, well, you're a sitting duck for a goose. <laughs> I'm paralyzed from the neck down. Cannot move. Cannot feel my body. What's your excuse? What are some of the character strengths of Ron? Anybody, just shout it from where you are, one at a time. Determination. Good attitude. Optimism. Go. Acceptance. Use your mic over that side, please, anybody there. Anything else? Confidence. Confident. Confidence, anything else? Resilience. Resilience, the ability to be able to fight back in the face of difficulties. Sense strong, of humor. Sense of humor, strong will. Anything else? I am looking for Honesty. a C word, a particular C word, yes? Contentment, that's not my C word, yes? Courageous, I'm still looking for another C word. Creativity. Creativity. He found a way to make it happen. He wanted to do his studies, but no hand said so he did it with a... He did his, his typing and so forth with a stick in his teeth, eh? Isn't that amazing? How many of us with hands just find excuses? Anyway, sorry. According to Ron, what are the choices that you have when you are faced with life's challenges? Anybody heard that? He used two B words. He said you can either be, either be bitter or better. What determines whether or not we are bitter or better? Your attitude. Yes. Great. How did Ron overcome the challenges, his challenges? He went for help? He welcomed help. He welcomed help. Anything else? He started speaking to others. But when he was in the hospital, something dramatic happened. A little boy came out of coma and said, How many of us know that those words can be therapeutic? When they are truly genuine, when it's from the heart. Okay, now tell your neighbor what is your takeaway from this group, from this video? What's one takeaway? What is your takeaway? All right, you want to tell me to? The will to live. The will to live. And okay. be successful no matter what. Your what did your neighbor tell you? What did your neighbor tell you? Your attitude will determine where you go. And what you told your neighbor? <laughs> that no matter what your circumstances, the attitude will make you survive. Great. Is there anybody that feels that this whole conference should hear my takeaway. Anybody like that? Who wants to tell us your takeaway? Thank you very much for volunteering. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> takeaway? Yeah, what you take away from, from the video? Yeah. Well, um, basically that there, is, there are no excuses and you should stop feeling sorry for yourself because there are people that are far worse than you, doing more than you. All right, so some of us need to dust off our vision. When we were younger, we had an idea that we wanted to be and so forth and so forth. So let's do it, eh? Here is a creed that Ron came up with that I'd like for us to read together. He calls this his never give up creed. Everybody, two, three. I am a never give up person. I believe my life has purpose and value. I will pursue my purpose daily. 
I will set my goals and not allow the negativity of others to distract me in achieving them. I am the master of my attitude. Today, Today I, I choose, choose to, to be, be positive. positive. I will love life and press on, even in the midst of my struggles. Therefore, I will. Full potential, and with the help of others, we will reach dreams that on our own are not possible. I will be strong to the finish. I will never give up. At the end of the day, when I lay my head down, I will rest in peace because I have faith, hope, and love. I think we should read that um, first line in, the top, in this slide again. I will be strong to the finish. Anybody near the finishing line? Be strong to the finish. Finish the assignment. Don't quit before it's over. Finish That's Ron's it. never give up creed. Finish the doctorate. Finish, finish, finish. Just speaking to ourselves. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. All right. So, control your thinking. Okay. Let's invite Mrs. Thomas again. Control your thinking. It controls your life. Here's what Gandhi says. A man is but the product of his thoughts. What he thinks, he becomes. The Bible puts it in another way. The Bible says what? As a man thinketh, so is he. That's right. So our thoughts are very important and it affects our feelings and our behavior. So we have to go think, think good thoughts. So let's say this together. After two, one, two. I set the course of my life today with my words. I declare today that I will not be defeated, discouraged, depressed, or disappointed today. I am the head. I have insight. I have wisdom. I have ideas. I have authority. I exercise my authority today with my words, and I decree a thing, and it is so. I am made in God's image, and God don't make no junk. I am an overcomer. God has a good plan for my life. I have the wisdom of God today. I will think the right thoughts, say the right words, and make the right decisions in every situation I face today. The power of life and death is in the it's in the tongue. And sometimes a doctor will tell someone that, you know, we've discovered that you have cancer and you have three, three months to live. And the person dies in three days. Simply because they start to say to themselves, Lord Jesus, be dead now. You understand? So we have to, we have to confess life. And we have to speak life over ourselves. So, can you just... Here's another time to partner with somebody at your table. Just turn to somebody, everybody have a partner at the table. And here's what I want you to do with a partner at the table. I want you, how many of you are sitting on beside somebody that you know? You sitting beside somebody that you know? Nice. So here's what I want you to say to that partner that you know. Tell them, speak life, tell them Two things that you admire about them. Two positive things you admire or appreciate about them. If you don't know the person who you partner with, speak two positive things into their lives. Tell them two positive things. All right, was that good? All right. Now, if that was good, give that person a hug, give them a high five, give them something. Yeah. Woo. Yes. Speaking life over each other is always a good thing. Always. What about you? <laughs> All right. Number seven. Be honest with your feelings, your dealings, and in your relationships. 
Honesty builds your self-esteem and improves your relationships. And it takes a brave person to be honest. Boy, sometimes, you know, sometimes, yes. But let us try to be as honest as much as we can. Number eight, lighten up and enjoy life. Now, this is a big lighten upper. Give him a round of applause. I feel like I set, get set up. <clears throat> you know, I saw on, the, on Facebook recently, this little thing, that somebody, a, little, a man went around the back and saw his daughter brushing the dog's teeth. Anybody saw that? And he was in shock. And the little girl looked at him and said, Daddy, don't worry about it. I'll return your toothbrush as I have done before. <laughs> My... <clears throat> so here is the question. What is the funniest thing or most embarrassing thing that ever happened to you? So my wife and I were getting ready to go to work one day. Sorry, we need some volunteers, you know. We need some volunteers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to get four volunteers for that. So let's get it ready. But listen. And by the way, Mrs. Thomas, I'd like to give you... Uh, I'd like to ask your permission to give away a complimentary copy to the person of the most embarrassing or the funniest situation. A funny, complimentary funny, copy. Funny, funny. Funniest, fu oh, funniest story. Okay. All right. Um, are embarrassing if they're comfortable with that. Anyway, so Mrs. Thomas and I were getting ready to go to work one day. And I kind of went ahead of her and opened the door and sat in the car and thought she was right behind me. I was in the car that was what seemed like 10 minutes. And she just wouldn't come downstairs. And I was there saying, where is she? You know that kind of way? Where is she? I went upstairs and I said, darling, what's going on? And she said, I am looking for my glasses. I looked on her face and it was not on her face. Then we started looking all around the places that she would put her glasses and we couldn't find it. <laughs> Finally, I got so annoyed and irritated that I said, I wonder if I'm wearing your glasses. And sure enough, I had on my wife's glasses. <laughs> After 32 years. We stay wear the same lenses. So one night I woke up now and I was there trying to find my glasses and I couldn't find it. Thank God I was able to find hers to help me find mine. <laughs> <clears throat> so we, I, we went out to town and we asked this question all over the place. And I, I, we were in Hanover and we asked this question, what's the funniest thing or most embarrassing thing that ever happened to you? A teacher spoke up and said she was at Sam Sharp Square. And somebody came up and put his hands over her eyes and said, guess who? You know the game we always play with our friends and so And she, and she said, she just went through the list. Friend, 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 nope, 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 nope. The person said, give up. Fine, she said, the person said, no. And then she, she just guessed again and guessed and guessed. Finally, she gave up. And when he took his hands off her eyes and she looked around, it was the community madman. She said, before she could think about it, her high heel shoes were on one side of the street and she was over the other side. <laughs> Let's take our contestants now. Number one, come. Yes, come to the come, front come, place come, quickly. Come, come. Yes, the funniest thing that, you know, one of the signs of good mental health is that we are able to laugh at ourselves and to laugh with each other. Okay, oh, so we need we need some other persons, man. Contestant number one, contestant number two. Yes. Yes. Contestant number three. Yes, sir. Make your way right down here, sir. Question, contestant number three, and we need a fourth, a fourth person right down here, male or female, it doesn't matter. Make your way right down here, ladies right. and gentlemen. It is my dis my joy to present to you the finalist in the competition. Make you laugh. All right, what's your name? So, My name is Dion. All right, Dion, so let's hear it. It was a Sunday evening's Sunday. Um, big presentation at church, and I was leading the choir, and I felt something slithering down my leg. It was my skirt. <laughs> so, so I just went down like this. And my, my sister fixed it, and I just came back up. <laughs> Give Dion a round of applause, that one was good.
All right, start off right there, so. All right, what's your name? Valerie Marston. Valerie. Yes, one day I was at work, and you know, our job is sort of hectic. Doctors calling, patients calling, friends calling. So I was in the restroom and my daughter came and knocked the door. Mommy, you know, doctor want to hear this about this medication. So I just jumped up, wiped my bottom, pulled up my pants and came out. So while I was talking to her, she said, Mommy, what is that behind you? <laughs> It was a toilet paper, it do. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> All right. So we got Dion, we got Valerie. <laughs> What's your name? <laughs> All right. Um, Patterson, Michael. Michael. All, right, all right, just allow them to simmer down, please. All right, so now we have Michael. Boy, um... <laughs> dear, it's funny because actually two of them, but um, I don't know which one to choose. <laughs> just give, just give us anyone. The both of them was really embarrassing. Um... <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't know. I can't say the two. I choose one. All right. The, uh, the first one was my kids. I always tell them, don't wake me up when you want anything. And them always have this habit when they want anything, they wake me deep sleep. And come and ask me. And I always help them with them homework, you know? Because my father said the same thing to me. So there's this particular night. Then get this homework. And my daughter come to me and, Daddy, what is AIDS? Then they just snore. Daddy, what is AIDS? And don't pay me. Daddy, what is AIDS? Something you eat, man. <laughs> <laughs> Something you eat, man. Yeah. I can't eat AIDS. <laughs> and um, the second one, second one was at, um, I was actually speaking to, I was on my phone speaking to, to some people. And um, someone I mind us chip. I was looking for the phone. That time I up on the phone, I talked to it, and I'm sort of blasted the phone, the man. And somebody come to me and said, Mikey, you talk on the phone, you know? I was here, I was here looking for it, and man talking. Aww. <laughs> All right. Ladies so, and gentlemen, you up are on that the side. judges. Stand up on that side, Mike. So, so we have. Let me we turn, have. Turn it back. Turn it back. What's your name? Dion. Okay, now you are the judge. If you feel that Dion's, that's Dion's, was the funniest or most embarrassing, just put up your hands. If you feel that it was the funniest or most embarrassing, all right? If you feel that Valerie's was the most funniest or most embarrassing, <laughs> and Michael, all right, turn around, guys. By overwhelming decision of the judges, it is Valerie. Yay! We'll autograph it afterwards. All right. Good, good, good. God bless you. Thank you. All of us. All of us. Faith, 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 faith. Look. Oh. All, right, All right. Great. Those funny and embarrassing moments could have rewards. Yes, so, so, <laughs> laughter is still the best medicine, right? Let's read, please. Lighten up and enjoy life. Bless someone with a smile. Everybody read. Smiling makes us attractive. Smiling changes our mood. Smiling is contagious. Smiling relieves stress, boosts your immune system, and lowers your blood pressure. Smiling lifts the face and makes you look younger. Smiling helps you stay positive. Wouldn't it be nice if when you get to home, there's a little bit more smile on your faces? When you go to work tomorrow morning, there's a little bit more smiles. Anybody knows the song? Wait, you ready to sing it to someone? Uh, 
Okay, so rest. Raise your hand to the one you love the best. Then shake hands with those. And greet Flash it out now. Woo! Nice. Wonderful. Yeah, smile. Smile some more. Takes fewer muscles and less energy to smile. Now, number nine says find spiritual purpose. So we're going, we're going 10 principles to help people find happiness. I hope you have all eight already. Which was the first one? Count your blessings. Two, do random and deliberate acts of kindness. Number three, family and friends. Four, man is stressed. Man is stressed. Five, responsible for your life. And six, control your thinking. Seven, eight, lighten up and enjoy life. And the ninth we want to share with you is find spiritual purpose. This is what the research shows. Studies show that people with strong religious beliefs tend to be happier than others. You know, I was in the hospital awaiting heart surgery. In 2011, the doctors had said that my heart functioning was down to 28%. I told my wife goodbye and told her it was okay for her to marry again. <laughs> but not before two years. <laughs> but my wife would have none of it. She said, God said her husband would not die but live to declare the works of the Lord. So while I was there talking about dying, she was sending out prayer letters. Letters went as far as Ukraine and Indian people prayed. I was in the hospital in March of 2012 awaiting heart surgery in New York. I wasn't sure if I was there for seven days. You know, I was on blood thin and they were waiting. You know that kind of story. Waiting for my blood to be thick enough for that kind of surgery. I wasn't sure if I was waiting to live or I was waiting to die. I was in the corner when my wife came and I was really feeling down and depressed. And then she patted me on the head, tears ran down my cheeks. Later that day, somebody sent me the words of the song that says, Jehovah Rapha, he's my healer. I played it over and over until I believed it. And I wrote on my Facebook page that night, that same God who I have trusted as my personal Lord and Savior from age 11 is the same God I am trusting to see me through this surgery. An eclipse took place. No longer was I seeing the size of the problem, but I was seeing the size of our God. My whole outlook changed. I went into the surgery the following day with the confidence that God will see me through. As you can guess, I survived. <laughs> I came out of the hospital, it was the 15th of March, 2012. Came out of the hospital the 20th of March. Went back the end of April for my post-op checkup. And the doctor said, even the dead section of your heart came to life when the blood was applied. Hallelujah. When the blood was applied, it was more profound than he knew. A year later, when I did my heart checkup, my heart functioning was at 72%. And the following year, 76% with all these happiness seminars I've been doing. <clears throat> and I keep my regular checkup and do my meds. And up to probably two, three weeks ago, the doctor is quite pleased. Uh, <clears throat> so, I realized that as I was dealing with my own life, that God could do further, far above that which I was able to think or imagine. So I transferred my trust to the, in the hand of the Lord. And guess what happened? One year after, on my, I came out of the hospital on the 15th of March, 2012. On the 2012, the, 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 sorry, did the surgery on the 15th of March, came out on the 20th. And the following year, United Nations declared March 20th International Day of Happiness. 
Isn't that amazing? So when you're here, we're having seminars on International Day of Happiness. We are also celebrating because God is a good God. When you rely on self, you get what self can give. When you rely on humankind, you get what humankind can give. When you rely on God, you get what the supernatural God can give. That's been my experience. And because of my spiritual grounding, I find greater happiness. Sometimes the hindrance to greater happiness is unforgiveness. And that will be our 10th principle that we look at today. And I'm going to invite my wife, Faith, to just lead us through this section. So, what is forgiveness? What is forgiveness? Anybody? Letting go. Yes, letting go, letting go. Here is what Nelson Mandela said. Let's read it together. As I walked out the door toward my freedom, I knew that if I did not leave all the anger, hatred, and bitterness behind, that I would still be in prison. Yeah. And that is what we want to end on today. That is the note we want to end on. As you walk through these doors, when you leave here, could it be that you could leave bitterness, unforgiveness, anger, even hate behind as you leave? We have that opportunity today. Forgiving is something you do for yourself. When you forgive yourself for another person, you let go of painful memories and reclaim your happiness and peace of mind. Do I hear an amen somewhere? Amen. That's right. Life, Swindoll says, is 10% what happens to me and 90% how I react to it. So it is as terrible as whatever it is happened to you, as terrible as it is, it is how you respond that is going to make you or break you. So what do you need to get past? What do you need to let go? Some of us have love-hate relationship with our mothers. Probably she wasn't there for us, or probably she said some bitter words that we can't get over, you know? And some of us worse is our fathers. Him? <coughs> you know that way? Where was he? Some of us don't even have his name. Who do you need to let go? Some of us, it is our employer. It is another pharmacist. You know, there are so many different things that we hold on to. Some people that we hold up, they're gone on the merry way and they forget everything about us living happy. And we are going through grinding our teeth and hurting. Hmm. What do we need to let go? How easy is it to forgive? How easy is it? If it is something really, really, really hurtful, it's hard, not true. Yes, it is. And you notice the, the guy up there, sometimes the price tag is too expensive, too hard, too far. Sometimes we say, how can I forgive? I need justice. It hurts too much. It's too difficult. But can I suggest to you that it is more difficult to carry it. It's just that when you're carrying it, you don't realize that it is slowly killing you. One person put it this way, that unforgiveness is like drinking a cup of poison and expecting the other person to drop dead. Why forgive? Let us read that together. Forgiveness is unlocking the door to set someone free and realizing you were the prisoner. We have to let it go. So, what is forgiveness? 
let us run through this. It is an act of the will. It is a choice. It is letting go of the desire for revenge or to punish the person. It is not ignoring the wrong done or minimizing it. We forgive people for things we blame them for. It is not forgetting. It is about the healing of the memory of the harm. It's not about removing consequences because sometimes the person need to go before the court. You know, one day there was a lady who forgave the person who killed her, her son. And she said to me, you think I should go and tell them to drop the case now? I said, no, even if you told them they wouldn't drop the case because consequences need to take place. So it is not removing consequences. But we don't necessarily have to go and drape up the person and carry out the consequence. Sometimes we might need to move away. It does not have to include reconciliation. Why? Forgiveness depends on how many people? One. Who is that person? Me. Me. Reconciliation depends on at least two persons. So if you forgive somebody and you say to them, I have forgiven you, and them say, move and go away, me know why you're nothing. Guess what? That doesn't stop you having forgiven them. You understand? You don't need somebody to apologize for you to forgive them. You can choose to forgive them. But... If we are going to move forward, give me a hand, Donovan. If we're going to move forward, we have to, the other person has to at least agree that they did something wrong and be willing to say, I'm sorry. If we're going to be reconciled, this is reconciliation. But I can forgive you even if you do not say you are sorry. Because forgiveness is for who? For me. That's where it starts. It is for me. Forgiveness is not the same as trusting. When trust is broken, it's sometimes it's very difficult to put it back together. Not impossible, just difficult. And forgiveness is a, is a process. Everybody read this. With forgiveness comes divine healing. The pain eventually goes until it is all gone. It's true. It is true. The pain eventually goes. And as we said, forgiveness is a process. Watch the pain. Gone. Gone. So, who do you need to let go? Excuse me. Excuse me. Try to understand that the persons you are forgiving they are victims too. You sit down there and you say, no sir, that person, that person don't look like a victim. Sometimes victims don't look like victims. And how you know that somebody is a victim is because they are willing to hurt others. That person is a victim. You might not know their pain, but they are victims too. So, We'll soon finish. Move, move, move. Expect positive results of forgiveness in you. In time, you'll be able to think of the persons without feeling anger, hate, resentment, bitterness, pain, etc. Because forgiveness is a process. And some of us also need to forgive ourselves because we have hurt others. So, as we wind down, you may have done all the other nine things, nine principles we talked about, but you are carrying hurts that you have not let go. I want to challenge you to let it go. Can we begin that journey today? Can we just say to God, God, it's hard to let it go, but help me. Help me. I've been there. I have been there. I have carried anger and bitterness 
for eight years. And I came to a point when I needed to let it go. And when I let it go, you know what happened? I felt like a load lifted off me and I knew that I was free. What about you? Joyce Myers shares her story. Some of you know her story. Sexual abuse for many years by her father. And when God started to speak to her about letting it go, it was hard for her, but she worked it through, worked it through until she eventually forgave him. And then she said to her father, I have forgiven you. And her father said, for what? I never knew nothing. So she forgave him. She forgave her mother who saw what was happening and did nothing. She forgave them and she moved on with her life. And years passed. And one day, God said to her, buy a house for your parents near to where you live and take care of them. She said first, it was like, huh, really? But she affirmed again that she had forgiven them, and then she did it. She took the money out of our savings, she bought the house 10 minutes away from where she lived, and proceeded to take care of them. And three years passed before her mother called her one day and said, your father is bawling, please come. And when she went, he said, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. He said, I've been watching you on TV and I didn't realize what I had done to you. I am very sorry. And she said, I have already forgiven you. That is when reconciliation took place in her home. The man was now in his 70s. But reconciliation took place. I want to say to you, you have control over forgiving either someone forgiving yourself and you pray for the person and let God do the rest. Can you close your eyes with me? Is that okay? Who do you need to let go? Who do you need to let go? Would you say to God, help me to let it go? I need to move on. Help me to let it go. I am just going to say a prayer that you can choose to repeat if that is your prayer. Father, I come to you today. I thank you that you love me. God, truth be told, I need to release some persons today. Help me take the bitterness and the anger and the hate and the unforgiveness and help me to walk free. I want you to call the name of the person or the names of the persons before God. Call the names. And whatever it is that they have done, just speak it out. Just as we've been speaking quietly to God. And just say to God, I choose to begin the journey of healing. I choose to let them go. Help me. I want to be free and I want to be healed. I'm going to ask you to pray for that person and ask God to bring healing into their lives. 
because they are also wounded people. Amen. Lord, I pray that you'll just pour in the oil and wine of healing upon bruised emotions in this place. We pray for a breakthrough in the heavens over some lives today. We pray, God, that you'd heal some brokenness. Some bitter words have been spoken over some people's lives. We ask, God, that you would heal. Lord, sometimes we wish we could take a, a tablet that will deal with our unforgiveness. But Lord, we come before you today and we recognize that forgiveness is the remedy for hate and bitterness. And we ask you to give us the strength to forgive in this hour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May I ask you to join me up here, please? What's, what's, your, what's your name? Join me right up here, sir, please. Right here, sir. Everybody can say, what, what, how much is this? A thousand dollars. Just verify that it's a thousand dollars, someone, please. Yes, please. It is. All right. Take it. Um, fold it in two, please. What's your name? Dana. Dana. Thank you, Dana. Uh, Dana. Th turn around a little. Oh, take her. Oh, oh, take her up on the stage. Oh, right up here. So my wife wants you to come up higher. Sorry, they. Okay. Um, fold it in two, please. Yeah, you have done it already. Fold it in four, please. You know what, Dana? I know this is very neat and fine, but just crush it up. Throw it on the ground. Trample upon it, Dana. You need help, man. <clears throat> How much is it, Dana? A thousand dollars. You sure? Mm -hmm. With all that you put it through? Yes. Then I say to you, it doesn't matter what you've been through in life. It doesn't matter how many times you've felt crushed, thrown to the ground or trampled upon. You are. You have not lost any value. You're capable. You're lovable. You're valuable. And we say that to And everyone. as I say to Dana, I say to so many of you who have been wounded, who carry scars around, and you try to put the best on the outside, I want to say to you, you have not lost any value. Lord, I pray over Dana right now in the name of Jesus. I pray for a breakthrough in the heavenlies over her life. I pray that you would bless her, God. Give her the capacity to let go. I pray for so many others here too who are wounded, Give them strength and bring healing as only you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. There are some of you who need to deal with your issues. My wife and I actually operate a counseling center not far from here. We have cards on the table. We have copies of the book. Most of what we have shared is from the book that somebody received today and we have copies outside there you can talk with us at the table during the break and we want to say thank you so much for your support as we participated god bless you have a great day thank you Dr. Donovan and Mrs. Faith Thomas, I want to thank you. We want to thank you for such an enlightening presentation from Apotex and from Caramel. We know that each colleague in this room this afternoon actually got a takeaway point from the presentation. Is that correct? My takeaway was treat others how you want to be treated. We want to thank you for your presentation, The Art and Science of Happiness, and we do hope that you enjoy the rest of your afternoon.